Hi everyone and welcome back to uh, track four, the second session of today. I am incredibly excited to uh, announce that this uh, session is going to be about the multi marketplace. This is something a lot of people have been asking for and have been talking about. Um, this session is pre-recorded by John Linnert, a uh, software engineer at Acquia. John has been with Maltic for a very long time. Um, he has been one of the first uh, programmers in the very early days of Maltic. So I'm very excited to have his session here today. What we'll do is uh, we'll share this video with you and towards the end of the session, um, we'll discuss any questions that might come up. So uh, once again, you'll be able to submit your questions via the link below. If you were also in the previous session, just uh, note that the link is different for the second session. So if you want to submit questions, please go to the link below. Um, without further ado, I'd say let's get started and let's share uh, John's presentation. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to my presentation about the Modic Marketplace. I am John Linhart and I must warn you that this presentation might get a bit technical. Although I did my best, uh, it would be uh, comprehensive for everybody. So let's jump into it. A uh, little bit about me. Um, I call myself John, but my actual name is Jan, which is a bit confusing because uh, I have Jan somewhere and John elsewhere. Uh, but let's call me John um, for various reasons. There is a link. Uh, with some explanations if you're interested. I am based in Prague, Czech Republic, uh, which is in Central Europe, which is very important because if somebody says that uh, Czech Republic is in Eastern Europe, then you will hurt a lot of feelings. Um, I would say like 10 million feelings. Um, so, um, if you look at the map, that's why it's here, so I could explain this to you. So Germany and Austria are considered to be a Western Europe countries. And if you look, most of the Czech Republic uh, is also in there. Um, so if we would, for example, make a line uh, going through the capital city of Austria here in Vienna, you could see that majority of Czech Republic is in Western Europe, except of course Brno, but I would still make the cut here. Um, nobody wants to even visit Brno. Okay, um, I digress. Um, I am a staff software engineer at Acquia. Uh, and I'm working on the Campaign Studio project, which is basically a nickname to Modic. Um, I was a second full-time developer on the Modic project, and I joined in the middle of 2014. And this um, marketplace thing is not just my theoretical um, wish, um, I have a hobby project um, that also uh, has a, a plugin for Modic and it is a pain to uh, tell the newcomers to the Modic community how to install a plugin. It's just user unfriendly. So that's, uh, that was the last drop that uh, caused that I will look into it. But let's start at the beginning, because um, uh, somebody can say, hey, uh, why didn't you do it right uh, at the beginning? We wouldn't be in this uh, mess now. Um, so let's let's look at what uh, was new um, at the uh, beginning of 2014. So PHP 5.6 wasn't even a thing. Uh, Symfony was in version 2.4. MySQL 5.6 was just announced. Um, React, React uh, JavaScript library was uh, very new. Uh, nobody knew that it will be there five, six years later. So 
who would bet uh, an open source project uh, that was just starting to use a new thing. Uh, Docker, the same uh, same thing. Uh, it was very new. Um, nowadays, it's normal to use Docker. Um, back then, it was like uh, magic. And uh, DigitalOcean started also in 2013. Um, so before that, um, as DigitalOcean was basically a pioneer uh, selling uh, virtual servers, before that, um, it was uh, very usual uh, for open source users to uh, host their uh, projects uh, on um, shared ho web hostings which were very limited in functionality um, so that was uh, the, the environment and uh, on top of that DB, Alan and I um, when who were basically the team back then uh, wanted uh, or we, we came from the Joomla community which was also a PHP MySQL project uh, but of course we wanted to do things better than the old Joomla project um, so we used Composer dependency management um, and PSR4 autoloader and we uh, start uh, fresh open uh, uh, open object oriented programming um, even though i would write it differently nowadays um, back then this was a very fresh and new project and we even used namespaces um, which was very new for me and for many and we picked uh, to use bootstrap uh, for uh, our front end as a css framework uh, which was again quite a new concept uh, how to write css um, so very stable and progressive uh, tech stack uh, back then and i was very interested uh, to use that um, so when we have a picture of uh, how the world uh, looked like uh, back then, uh, then uh, the decision that the, the project must run on shared web hostings is basically given. Um, and uh, this was a constraint that uh, we had to bend the Symfony app uh, to the, the, the directory structure basically because um, uh, most of the shared web hostings didn't have uh, the directory above the public directory it just had the public directory so we moved everything into the public directory uh, normal symphony app wouldn't have that uh, they would have at least the, the, the source code outside of the public directory and also the table prefix, um, the shared hostings were, had a limited uh, number of databases that you could use. So it was common then you would host several open source projects in one, uh, one database. So um, that's why we chose to use the table prefixes that are making the developer uh, work miserable um, since then and um, php and mysql uh, ran on every shared hosting so we wanted to stick to those two technologies we didn't want to introduce anything else like uh, some queuing technology uh, that wouldn't be able to install for users um, so if we would start a year later or two years later modic would look very different uh, the installation process again it was very similar to what we were used to from joomla or wordpress you would download a zip package unzip it um, move the files and folders uh, through ftp which would take forever to upload it to the server and then you would um, open the installation wizard and um, insert database credentials, user info, and um, use the project. 
back then very normal thing I wouldn't even think about doing it differently um, the plugin installation process is lacking um, when you compare it to Joomla or WordPress you have to download the zip file for whatever internet and um, unzip it and upload it to the right directory and then you have to uh, clear the cache and uh, hit the install button in the administration and hopefully you will see the new plugin there very painful process for new people who doesn't want to use you know ftp and this stuff and the plugin update process is uh, i wrote down manual but but i could even write down uh, non-existent because nobody really goes to see what plugins are installed on on one of their modic instances and hunting um, in the internet whether there is a newer version um, or if there is a security vulnerability in the plugin that they have installed um, so this is a quite bad state um, so let's look at the marketplace as I envision it for the modic users so it would show a list of available plugins in the administration you, know, you could see a description some technical info like how many dependencies it has uh, some info about the popularity statistics how many times it was downloaded already uh, how big is the user base important stuff um, and uh, the marketplace must be also considering the modic version the php version and the server configuration uh, to uh, consider uh, when they want to install a plugin because if if it was written for modic 2 and you are using modic 3 and you will install it it will break your installation of modic uh, your instance uh, so same with php version or even some PHP uh, module that the plugin needs um, it should check all that before uh, the installation it should warn you hey this is not compatible with um, your configuration and it should uh, have a one button to install a plugin if you select it you hit the button and it will uh, do everything for you uh, it will download it from uh, some other server so the communication between two servers is much faster than if you try to upload it file by file from local to server it will know what dependencies what other packages must be installed and uh, it will move all the files to the right place and it will install the database schema and it will clear the cache for you and it, there might be other another steps um, to it and uh, it should be all hidden under one button click and uh, more impo important uh, is how it uh, look like uh, for updates it can be a one button update where uh, the modic will uh, notify uh, users hey there is a new version uh, available uh, click this button to update it or it can be even automatic uh, you should be able to set for each plugin whether you want to update them automatically if you trust the vendor or if you want to um, be notified about uh, stable versions or beta versions um, and uh, the fact that we don't have that today is a big security hole because nobody as I said nobody's checking whether some plugin they, they have installed two years ago uh, is has a security ho hole every week right nobody does that um, and it would install uh, the update with very similar steps as above with the install button so it would download the, the updated code install the database migrations clears the cache uh, blah 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 all with one button or automatically and how it looks like from the developers point of view uh, so it would be a simple 
uh, to add new plugins to the marketplace. Uh, it should be just uh, making a new repository in GitHub, for example. Very simple. Um, it should um, have a very simple way how to release updates. Um, it should be that simple so it could be automated. Uh, so it would just run through the CI process. Uh, it would run all the tests and uh, after that it can go directly to the marketplace as a new version. Um, it should um, have a way how to install composer dependencies, which is a very difficult task to do now. Uh, so if your plugin is using some library, uh, you have to hard code it in the plugin. Uh, what if two plugins are using the same library but different version, then it would be uh, basically breaking your modic installation. Uh, because the same namespaces will be used in two places. It's a nightmare to do it now. Um, um, and it should have a way how to configure what the plugin is supporting. Uh, is it supporting Modic 2, Modic 3 uh, or just Modic 3? Or does it support all the PHP versions that Modic does or just the newest? or even the older ones, uh, the plugin developer should specify that uh, to avoid some uh, issues with uh, where the users will be installing it. And it would be a plus if uh, the, the marketplace would be using some familiar standard tools that the PHP developers are already using. And it should support uh, plugins as well as themes the same way and in the future maybe use a standardized payment gate for pay paid extensions because uh, what, what we have talked about right now uh, or up till now is about open source projects that are publicly downloadable so this is something that uh, I will not cover in this talk but once we have the, the open source the public uh, support then we can start talking about the, the paid plugins um, and if all that was true, we could have a much leaner Motic core because now it's quite bulky, it's fat, it has everything and uh, majority of users use only like 20% of it and uh, the rest of it is, is just a mist of um, problems. Okay, so let's look at uh, the Composer. Uh, Composer is the uh, dependency manager for PHP and every single PHP developer use it on a daily basis. Um, and uh, fun fact is that Composer itself is a PHP library that is installable by Composer. A uh, little bit of uh, inception there. So we can uh, add Composer to Modic Core so uh, our users wouldn't have to install it on their servers and when i say composer it goes with packages.org which is a website um, that is a repository of, of all available php packages that you can install with composer and it has accessible api you don't have any creden you don't have to use any credentials to use it it's just public and it has all the things that we talk about. It has description, it has dependency list, it has a popularity info, statistics. And it already checks for PHP versions and dependency versions. Uh, and there already is a Composer plugin for installing uh, Modic plugins. Let's look at it quickly. So, uh, it is under the, the Modic uh, GitHub directory. And you can just place uh, some info to the Composer JSON of your plugin, and then your plugin is installable via Composer. So we have all that. This is like 90% of what we need, right? So 
uh, a year ago I was uh, thinking about this and I said hey let's let's try to code something quickly uh, if uh, it is possible to use composer with some user interface because th that's the last missing part so uh, I have created a pull request where anybody can uh, use it or try it or improve it and I have wrote a blog post about uh, how to use it and what the, the goal is and everything basically uh, this talk is in there so let's look at uh, modic when, I, uh, when you have that uh, pull request installed, you will have a marketplace option in the admin menu. Alright, and um, you can see that already it, there, there already are plugins for various uh, vendors and there are only 56 plugins that are in the packages. So, hey, we already can use this, right? I don't have to ask uh, developers to add new plugins to uh, packages so we can use it. No, we already have that. Um, and here you can see the name, you can see some short description, you can see who created uh, the plugin? Everybody knows Kuzmani, right? Uh, you can see how many times it was downloaded. Uh, there is uh, also some stars, so users can uh, add stars to their favorite plugins. Very useful info, right? So let's look at to this recapture bundle, which is quite popular. All right. So uh, here we can see it has uh, some GitHub stars, um, it has some forks, it has uh, nine issues, and no dependent packages. Um, it has uh, it was downloaded fifteen hundred times, eighty six uh, times monthly downloads, four times daily downloads. It was created back in two thousand eighteen, but uh, it has quite recent latest version and it has a uh, license of course it has some issue tracker so we can report bugs there or questions we can see who created it uh, if we click on the name we can see more details like how to use it how to install it which is not really important when we would have a marketplace uh, how to configure it and how to use it right useful stuff all within the administration so then um, there is the install process and when i uh, tried it one year later it seems to be broken so um, i uh, will not show you uh, how it works here uh, but uh, the idea was that there will be a uh, separate steps um, and uh, the user will see what oh, I will click the install button um, what the steps step is and um, what's next so basically the idea was that the output of the composer command would be here like a live stream but I was told by uh, other users when, when I was demoing it, demoing it that this is too technical, that users don't want to see it. So uh, it's, it's broken, so I will not fix it because this is probably not how it, uh, it's going to look like. And uh, it will be changed anyway. So I can show you how it uh, looks like here. Uh, it's basically executing this command, right? Uh, don't mind this, uh, this is just some comp uh, uh, docker stuff um, and I had to raise the memory limit to 2 gigabytes because 1 gigabyte is too low for this uh, again, this is one constraint that we will talk about later 
And then we have the uh, Mautic Marketplace install command and we want to install this recapture bundle. So when I hit it, uh, then it will tell you, I, okay, this, this uh, package is about to be installed. And look at the plugins directory here that uh, the recapture bundle is not within there. And also you can notice that there is a composer-combined-json which is basically a hack uh, that I had to do to avoid modifying, modifying modic composer.json. Okay, I have five minutes to go. Um, uh, and th this will take like two minutes to install. So we can see it's updating, uh, it's loading repositories, it's just doing a lot of stuff. So uh, I would like to avoid doing this hack and it's it's not even way to go as I discovered later. Um, so the, the thing is that uh, we don't want to update Modix Composer because uh, we want to have the modic to be still updatable, right? Um, so I have created this composer.json combined uh, co combined JSON, and it would basically uh, take this composer and adds the the plugin to it. But then we will have to also track uh, plugins separately, like what plugins are installed, and it's a it's a nightmare. I think this is even slower when I'm recording, so I'll just go back to it later. Okay, and um, let's move on. So the blockers, um, composer one, as we are using right now with Modic. Uh, is slow for HTTP requests and it requires a lot of memory. Um, uh, and uh, we should uh, fit within 30 seconds how to how to attack this uh, constraint. Is we can check for the time and memory limits on the server when Modic is where Modic is running and uh, estimate the time and prevent users to shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, and tell them, hey, either increase the limits or use the command. Um, and uh, my, my biggest hopes uh, are going into Composer version 2, which is much, much faster and optimized for memory consumption. But how faster, we would have to test, and there is a PR for that. Um, and otherwise, we could also use background processing, but who would want to wait for installation when the when when a cron task will kick in, uh, it will be uh, worse user experience, but it would be st more stable. Um, and the problem is that uh, when Modic is not installed by by Composer, uh, then it uh, cannot check uh, if the plugin can be installed in Modic. Um, we, we would have to write the logic ourselves if we would want that. Uh, so as, as I said, we have to modify Composer JSON to install the plugins. We don't want that. We want to be want, want that to be um, uh, still. E everything is hack, and uh, I think we should do it properly if we want. And th there is even a nicer version of um, how you can install Modic with Composer. Uh, in, in here, uh, but again, it's a hack. So, how to unblock it? Um, basically, we can make Modic installable via Composer, and there is a PHP open source project that does that, so we can inspire there. Uh, so, I would propose a different directory structure, so move some stuff around. So, Modic itself would be in the vendor directory. And we would use a uh, post create project command uh, that uh, Composer provides. 
to move some stu stuff into uh, other directories after installation. So basically the vendor folder would have modic itself, some modic dependencies, plugins, plugin dependencies, everything uh, and uh, this way modic has its composer JSON and the project has its own composer JSON. So this is a very clean way how to do it. So there would be a var directory that we have already with modic 3 with some variable files, temporary files, cache, uh, maybe config logs, migrations, blah blah and, and it would have a public directory and only this directory would be accessible through web uh, so it would also um, be more secure because um, hackers wouldn't have access to these directories and uh, how the installation would look like with Composer and you can already try it right now you can install Modic 2 version here or you can change that to Modic 3 so it's basically say hey Composer create new project uh, from Modic core and uh, install it into a Modic directory you can change that to be whatever and you don't want to install the development uh, packages for production and uh, if you want some details about that, you can visit my blog about it and you can even try it, it it's working, it's installing Modic. Um, issues to resolve. Um, so each plugin uh, can have uh, own assets, so now the, the assets are uh, accessible, uh, public, but uh, it wouldn't be under the, this new structure. So I think we should, um, after uh, installation, run the command that already exists to uglify, minify assets for Matic and uh, push it to the public directory, basically. Um, Modic hosting providers might want a possibility to disable marketplace completely because it might be considered a security hole. Um, or they can uh, only whitelist some approved plugins and themes to be installed on their platform. Again, not, not a problem to implement that. Uh, this uh, this would be a no-go. Uh, shared web, web hostings would not be supported anymore. But uh, I think that it wouldn't be an issue because it's not based on what I've read in uh, Slack channels, it's not recommended anyway. And then we would have to figure out how to serve paid extensions. Uh, so there is option to use private packages, um, may, may be maintained by the community. And uh, we could also find some way how to broadcast the security vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities to certain plugins. If it happens, everybody should know, everybody who used that plugin. And we should maybe even remove it from the marketplace that way. So thank you for listening and let's look at some questions. So what I would like to do now is to bring in John so we can actually go uh, through the questions that were submitted. Hi John, welcome. Hi, hello. And again, uh, apologizing for the bad quality video and audio. I think that was the audio also better. Could you uh, could you still hear that? I could understand myself, but it might be just because I know what I was saying. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll make sure to upload to upload those. Um, so if you have any questions that you haven't posted yet, feel free to go to the link below to uh, to ask the questions. Um, I'm looking at the questions. There's currently not any questions uh, from the audience. Hmm. Um, I do, ex yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I was expecting that there will be quite a few because when we discussed this uh, topic in the Slack channel, uh, then there was a lot of opinions. Um, exactly, I think it's a, it's a topic that a lot of people have an opinion about and that they want to uh, to chat about. Uh, but regardless, I do have a few questions. First one being um, security. So 
the plugins will be uploaded to to packages basically but do we have some way to filter for example malicious plugins so let's say someone uploads uh, a malicious plugin can we somehow prevent users from installing that or it has any thought uh, gone into that yeah right uh, so when we will be using um, packages we basically don't have any control over packages that are there because that's not our repository it's a repository yeah. for any php package but we can um uh somehow <laughs> i i don't have this uh figured out in detail but uh, at least uh give some notice uh to the package that hey that, that this is uh this is a security hole um through our own channels so we would consume the data from packages as well as from some uh, our API, the community. Right. So that, that would basically be sort of a, a blacklist and for um, or block list mm -hmm. for some yeah. plugins. Makes sense. So we have a question from Alex. He's asking, "I love the idea of a marketplace, and what can we do to start this?" So I think the question is about how how to move forward with this and how can we make sure it actually gets released to the public yeah so so i had a demo uh there in the presentation but it wasn't really uh in focus um so um there already is a, a demo uh, well there is a pull request in github you can uh, try it out and uh, look for yourself um but as i noted uh, as i said in the presentation uh, there are some blockers uh, the main being that the composer one is uh, too slow and requires a lot of memory yeah. um, i think dennis you have more uh, details about how it's going with uh, composer 2 integration right yeah so composer 2 isn't actually too far away we just have one dependency that needs to be um, updated for that in order to go to composer 2 uh, the thing is we can only update the dependency as soon as we upgrade symphony which is quite a, a rather big undertaking uh, we had the upgrade from logic 2 to 3 which had, had a major symphony upgrade as well and we expect the next upgrade to be a lot less work but still, we cannot just simply update the dependency and, and go ahead. Um, so yeah, that, that's currently blocking the up, update to Composer 2. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. If the, if the community says we need to push things forward, we could uh, potentially consider it for an earlier release. But I think the most feasible timeline would be uh, Mautic 4, which is scheduled, scheduled for May. Uh, because there we will also be upgrading uh, the symphony dependencies which makes which makes it a lot easier to go to composer 2 as well yeah yeah and uh good thing is that um uh, it's a hot news that alan already uh, submitted the pull request that is upgrading symphony to symphony 4.4 so we are very close uh and um, hopefully we will have a working version soon as soon as we merge uh, those uh, three prs together we can uh, start uh, working on the marketplace again yeah so it's mostly the, the technical work that still needs to happen in the background and apart from that most of the marketplace is, is ready if i understand correctly yes and then uh there is uh, the, the other blocker is the directory structure uh, because so so uh, what is uh, what, what was hard to see in the presentation um so uh there is uh now uh this is also quite new uh, com uh composer json file is distributed with the with the uh, modic production package which was not uh the case um i i think it will be new to the latest version um so that is necessary there um and then we have to avoid um modifying that composer json so we either have to hack it somehow that we will uh, install the the plugins to other composer json or, and uh, somehow figure out uh, how to update modic uh, with installed 
plugins in it. Um, that's another discussion. Um, or we can do it cleanly and uh, have Modic installable as a dependency of a project. So you would basically install with Composer a fresh project, have a Modic as a dependency, have some plugins as a dependency, and it would all work together and you wouldn't have to uh, hack some Composer JSON files and modify them. Right, so to to build further on this question, I see another question from Rahul, who's asking, what's the tentative date for the Composer ready Modic? And that's what you just mentioned, like it would be an option to make Modic itself installable via Composer as well. Um, are, you, are you aware of how much work has been done for that? Because I think you considered it for the marketplace as well, didn't you? Right. Um, so if we want to do it cleanly, we, we would have to go that way. Um, and uh, again, it was uh, uh, in the slide in the presentation, there is already a command uh, you can uh, execute um, and it will install Modic via Composer. Um, and there is uh, also another project that is doing some post-processing, uh, so it will move some folders around so it would actually work. Um, it was also mentioned in the presentation and uh, I can share a link. Um, uh, but again, those are hex, and if we want to make it clean, uh, we would have to uh, break some backward compatibility and uh, move some, some folders around. Yeah, so that would most likely then be uh, Mautic 4, because we only introduce breaking changes if it's a new major version. Right. Okay, so there's some technical work to do. There's a few decisions still to be made. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a forum topic about this as well. So if you want to chime in and join the discussion, then feel free to go to forum.matic.org and you'll be able to find it there. Um, I'll check after the presentation. If it isn't there yet, we'll make sure to add it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Yes. Um, okay, then we have one more question from Anton. He's asking, how long did it take you to develop the modern marketplace and how to stay motivated while working on open source projects? Huh. Okay, uh, I don't remember how long did it take. I, I did it on, on some weekends, it was a year ago. Um, I, it wasn't that long, uh, I, I would say um, four or five days. Um, and how to stay motivated? Uh, I had a crisis uh, this year, so I am not really the best person to speak about that. But uh, talking with uh, with uh, people in the community uh, makes a big deal for me. So stay connected uh, with everybody and uh, yeah, that, that's probably the yeah, for sure. We're, that's uh, that's very difficult to do currently. But if if we talk about your your own motivation, so let's assume there's no external factors involved. Then what is the, the drive or the motivation for you to to keep working on these projects, like the um, the marketplace? Right. So uh, for me personally, it is to help people. Uh, so uh, help people to to send more um, focused messages uh, to at the right time. And um, I think that's, that, that's the main uh, source of motivation for me, just to help people. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it gives a lot of energy as well to see people getting involved and to actually get things out of the door to help others. Yes, yes. And uh, you um, brought a big wave of uh, of uh, new ideas and uh, um, and power into the project yourself. So uh, I am uh, very interested in your presentation about that. Yeah, which uh, which is the one after this one? Um, yeah, I, I think we're we're about to to have to go into very exciting times for Motic with the marketplace with uh, Motic 4 coming up 
Um, I think if the marketplace is there, it's, re it's really going to give a boost to the product because it's going to be just so much easier for people to, uh, to extend Maltic's core functionality. And it will also allow us to, uh, to maintain Maltic core a lot more uh, easily, like you already mentioned in the, in the presentation. So uh, yeah, I'm actually very much looking forward to, to the coming months. Again, if you want to chime in on the discussion with, uh, about the marketplace, feel free to go to the forums. Um, we'll also make sure to upload John's presentation somewhere after the, after the event. So you can rewatch it at any time at good quality. Again, apologies for that. And uh, for now, John, I would like to thank you very much for your, for your presentation and for your time. Um, yeah, I think if people have any questions, uh, where can they reach you best? Um, so I noticed that this platform already shows some links to LinkedIn and Twitter, so probably those places. For sure. And there's also, uh, we have a lobby in the event platform. So if you have any questions, you can go, go over there and, uh, and ask them as well. So uh, again, thank you so much for, for this session. Um, we're gonna have a little break of around 15 minutes. And um, then we'll have my session, which is about uh, going from a Mautic user to becoming a core contributor. So uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, John, again, thanks for your, for your session and your time. And um, see you soon. Bye.